Good morning and welcome to The Social Show. You are listening to Vue Cholwana representing Social TV. If you want to know a little bit more about what we do, please don't forget to go to www.social-tv.co.za for your latest in CSI, CSR, NGO, social entrepreneurship, CSV, all of it. We've got it covered. It's a very cold, cold morning and I am freezing, but I can't uh, I can't start the show without sending my warm and well wishes to all the people in Cape Town, all the people in Neisner who are experiencing really, really horrible conditions in terms of their weather. Uh, I really hope it subsides soon, but without any further ado, we're going to start our day with the news. <laughs> On the 10th of June 2017, Dulux manufactured by Axo Noble and Global Peace Movement Masterpiece will be adding colour to the lives of people in Kailicha in the Western Cape through its Let's Colour Walls for Connection initiative. The Let's Colour Walls of Connection initiative aims to inspire and energise cities around the world and make people's lives more livable and inspiring by using colour to transform walls symbolic of separation of communities, neighbourhoods, cities or countries into walls of connection by bringing the community together to paint those walls. Dulux and Masterpiece invite the community of Kailicha to join them to paint the wall opposite the Kailicha Library on the 10th of June 2017. The wall mural designed by Masterpiece artist Keenan Pullman will reflect the community's dreams of unity and will serve as a reminder of hopefulness for the community. The wall in Kailicha will be one of a hundred walls that Dulux and Masterpiece join forces to color in more than 40 countries this year. The community events will take place in cities all over the world from Indonesia to Brazil and will involve hundreds of artists, Dulux employees, masterpiece teams and thousands of local participants. South Africa is one of the four countries on the African continent that will partake in the worldwide initiative including Tunisia, Morocco and Malawi. In a recent announcement, Water for Air CEO Ray De Freer said that he had dotted the I's and crossed the T's of their latest offering, a bottling plant that can produce up to 3,000 bottles of the purest uh, water per day and can be scaled up to any requirement. Housed in a 20-foot container, the plant is a turnkey bottling plant that produces the purest water possible from the air. The idea originated in 2009 when De Freer and his partner, Ball Raglan Smith, worked together on a water from air bottling plant powered by a wind turbine in Durban. Orders are coming in from South Africa and a number of countries in Africa and are going beyond, according to De Freers. And the company manufactures in Johannesburg and assembles the plants in Durban and now in Cape Town. And lastly, in our news, uh, Thursday, the 1st of June 2017, saw the winners of the hashtag Red Experiment announced at the Young Blood Art Gallery in Bree Street, Cape Town. The experiment created by Radisson Red in collaboration with the Young Blood Africa Foundation encouraged local creatives to submit their artwork for a chance to be part of the hotel's creative team and a chance to win 10,000 rand each in either the beer mat design 2050 uh, milliliters or 30, 350 milliliters takeaway coffee cup sleeve design categories. Over 100 entries were received and out of the three winners, all of which were from South Africa, emerged victorious. We've got Mika Donnelly was named the winner of the creative beer mat design and while Rikas Roths and Ngulle Zulu were the winners of the 250 milliliters and 350 milliliters a takeaway coffee cup sleeve designs respectively and that concludes our news for today have you ever thought about the power of social media social media has the power to make your business grow grow you why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za. On this cold, cold Thursday morning, it's only right that I speak about an initiative that's trying to warm up the streets and trying to warm up South Africa and communities in, in Johannesburg, uh, especially. And today I'm joined by Zakira Vadi from uh, the Ahmed Katrada Foundation. He's going to be talking to us a little bit about uh, the Operation Winter Warm Campaign. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you for coming in this coldness. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about the Ahmed Katarada Foundation? Just because I feel as though I don't want to speak about the, the campaign until people understand 
you know, your guys' gravitas. Okay, the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation was formed in 2008 basically to continue the legacy of Ahmed Kathrada, of Ahmed Kathrada who was a prisoner on Robben Island for 20, 26 years, alongside Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu and others. And it was basically to continue his generation's legacy. And that was the initial idea behind it. And the key objective of the foundation is deepening non-racialism. Yes. And we do this through a number of ways. We found that Ahmed Kathrada was a non-racialist throughout his life. Yes. And we felt that it's important to continue this particular aspect aspect of his values and principles. And how we would do that is we have a youth leadership program where we take in about 60 people y- uh, a year. They go through an intensive leadership course, um, develop programs of their own, such as the Operation Winter Warm campaign. And then we've got um, a research department that looks into issues of, of racism in the country on an ongoing basis. Yes. We have public dialogues on issues of racism. And then we look at broader historical work. So the history of Ahmed Kathrada, the yeah. history of Walter Sisulu, the history of that particular generation and subsequent generations and their contribution to the struggle for non-racial South Africa. Definitely. And the importance of preservation, uh, pre- uh, preserving this particular bit of history, promoting this history, yeah. so that future generations can understand the struggle towards that, um, towards that non-racialism or towards that vision for non-racialism in South Africa. Um, then we have a media department that deals with all of the media issues um, in the foundation. We've had one race reporting conference thus far. And we also have um, a, a very big archival section at the foundation where we welcome people's historical records. Wow. Anything that deals with their contribution to the struggle or their contribution towards a better South Africa, they can come and house it at the Ahmed, the, the, the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation. Um, a large part of our program was focused on Ahmed Kathrada's actual day-to-day diary. He had about 200 engagements a year, public engagements. Okay. And this included speeches, awards, school visits, university visits, etc. And since his passing, that has obviously fallen away. Mm. But we now want to look at a legacy program for him. Definitely. Definitely. And that sounds yeah. great. That's in it just what the foundation does. Lovely. And I'm sure a lot of people already knew that because you guys are everywhere. In my head, I see you guys <laughs> everywhere. Okay, so let's talk about Operation Winter Warm. It's an annual campaign. It's been running for five years. Can you tell us a little bit about this, the involvement of the campaign and what it actually is what it's for? Operation Winter Warm is actually a very old concept. Um, in its current form, it's a five-year-old project. But it's something that started about 30 years ago in Lanesia by the old Lanesia Youth League. Wow. And this Youth League was a very progressive formation in the Lanesia area that on a consistent basis challenged the apartheid government in various ways. Mm. So this Youth League uh, was amongst the forefront of activists standing up against the tricameral system, for example. And this was one of the ways in they, uh, that they saw an opportunity to get young people involved in activism and volunteerism in the community, as well as cross all sorts of div- divides at the time. Because during the 80s, um, Lanesia would have been a group a group area. There would have been high levels of segregation, not only in terms of race, but in terms of people's very conservative mindsets around religion, um, yeah. around a range of things. Yeah. And this was a way to get young people from across different um, different cultural backgrounds, different race backgrounds, interacting with each other through a common project to address um, issues of poverty, to address issues of, of food shortages, etc. Um, and basically just to share a bit of goodwill. And this particular notion was then taken up in various forms throughout the years in yes. Indonesia. And um, the foundation's initiative particularly started five years ago. Okay. And it started off with um, a good grouping of young people coming together, going door to door, knocking on houses, um, asking people basically for blankets, food, um, this non-perishable food items, yes. clothing, as well as books or toys that they could donate. And this is then packaged, um, sorted out, packaged and then distributed to the less fortunate. Last year, we had um, between 300 and 400 volunteers um, over sing- probably the coldest weekend in jo- wow. <laughs> in Johannesburg. It's a lot of people to get out, to it's, come out. Yeah, um, It's a phenomenal amount of young people. Yes. And, and this year, we aim to get a thousand young people. Mm. And our youth coordinator, Busiswe Nkosi, says that this year we have already 800 people subscribed wow. for the coming weekend. And to, to our knowledge, this is probably the largest youth initiative of this kind that goes door to door anywhere yes. in the country. Yes. And um, um, it's, it's, it's phenomenal in a way that we, we see a sort of reinterest in the aspect of volunteerism. Yes. 
And we've been saying as a foundation that um, volunteerism, community activism has taken a dip post-1994. Yes. In a way, there was an expectation that, you know what, government's going to do everything. But all of a sudden, we see this um, reigniting mm. um, of passion for for, volunteerism. Uh, for volunteerism, for community activism, and the fact that it's young people that are coming out and, and doing this sort of thing. And it's pretty selfless. I mean, they all that a young person would get in return for <coughs> this is a certificate of acknowledgement that yeah. they've done this work. Um, and they can then use that certificate in their CVs or whatever. Yes. But other than that, it's a very selfless uh, type of initiative that you're embarking on. So, so far, the, the response has been good. And from our side, we would just like to urge communities to to do something similar in your area mm. and to to contribute in, in various ways. Donate when people knock on your doors. Um, send volunteers through and later on I can share the details of that. Definitely. Um, I was actually going to go back to that volunteering uh, point that, you know, volunteering is starting to grow a little bit more in South Africa. You've got so many amazing initiatives, especially this one as well. How are you guys getting the youth to commit? What is your strategy? Do you send emails? Are you speaking to people you already know? Uh, Is it social media? How are you getting them to commit to come? I think it's a variety of, of ways that we've employed. The first would be through our annual leadership program we've um, basically got a good group of activists going lovely um, and many of them from 2012 onwards have said that they want to come and back and uh, come back into the foundation plow their efforts back into the work that we're doing and this is one of the ways that they can do so yes um, and then we've gone on to social media we've had twitter storms we've um, gone into community radio stations we've put up placards and posters and this is all done by a very small team there's probably about four or five young people in the office that wow. sit on a day-to-day basis many of them in that team also volunteering their time yes. or just these interns um, pulling this particular thing together and everything from start to end from the from the way things are designed to um, the media everything is done by a group of young people so um, it's a phenomenal effort and I think the community of Laneysha has also be- began to identify with this campaign. Lovely. Um, and the fact that it's in winter, it's mm. freezing cold, um, you very sort of, you have s- some sort of empathy for the person who you see in the street is sleeping with cardboards. Yeah. Um, and in fact, we yeah. think that just our posters that we put up on cardboard, um, there were reports coming through that those posters were taken down in some areas. So we were quite concerned yeah. until we realized that um, the likelihood of of there being homeless people who was, who were taking those cardboards to sleep on at night, and then we realize, wow. you know, uh, this c- could actually be happening, yeah. and we shouldn't. It isn't take about offense, yeah, yeah, it, it, it isn't it. vandalism. Yes, it's actually yes. them trying to get some sort of warmth. That's really crazy. Can you tell us a little bit about your beneficiaries? Who have you selected, and how did that come about? So this year we're doing things a little bit differently. Okay. Um, let me start w- with what we're doing the same. So last year we went to Little Rose um, Center. This is in Cliptown. It's a, a very impoverished community. So if you're driving alongside the road, um, you'll see that the type of living conditions there. And this center caters for a number of underprivileged children. And last year we took Ahmed Kathrada to this particular place on Mandela Day. So all of the, the beneficiaries receive their stuff on Mandela Day as part okay. of our ongoing Mandela Day initiative work over the years. Yes. So we took Ahmed Kathrada to there and he received a very hearty welcome. The children were overjoyed to be receiving mm. some of the items. Mm. Um, and we felt um, that th- this is a really deserving sort of place where, where we can, you know, on an ongoing basis engage with the yeah. pupils that are there definitely so that's one of the beneficiaries last okay. year there were a couple of other homes in and around the Lanesia area that were selected we also went to plastic views informal settlement and i'm not too sure if people would recall that there was a fire that basically ripped through the, uh, through the informal settlement and i think when we went to the informal settlement last year we were very very shocked so yes. many of us we we live in a community surrounded by informal settlements so many of us um, I may have been to an informal settlement where friends had come from informal settlements, but Plastic Views was really different. Yes. And this is because most of the houses weren't even made of um, tin material. They were made of plastic. plastic. So when the fire um, basically oh. ripped through this place, it gutted the yes. entire community. And oh. there was a church nearby that was collecting items and then packaging it and distributing it this commun- to the community. So many of the, the contributions that people gave went to the church, who then who then um, fed it through to the community. 
this year um, we have plans to start if or to re sort of invigorate a food and clothing bank in the area. Yeah. There is a food and clothing bank in Region G, but it doesn't seem to be completely functional. Okay. So the initial idea was to have some sort of sustainable project running. Mm-hmm. We are currently in negotiations with the region about this. Uh, this initiative and I think in the coming uh, weeks we're probably going to be engaging various community stakeholders on how to get this sort of an initiative going as well. Definitely it's so amazing and I'm thinking now about the Nisena fires and I'm thinking oh my word I really wish that this Operation Winter Warm was sort of a, a continental a thing. Yes, yes definitely. Um, lastly I just want to say uh yeah. So where can people get a hold of you? How can people get in, involved? If I'm a young person listening now, how do I go? And, and on it's, when is it? It's on is this it's, Saturday? It's the 10th and 11th. 11th yes. So it's Saturday it's and Sunday. Sunday. Yep, the yep. main day being um, Saturday. Okay. So uh, this, this time around, we have sort of... Um, the reason why it takes place in Lanesia is because we are based in the Lanesia area. Our offices are there. Yes. So it kind of makes it a little bit convenient. Yeah. And also it depends on the amount of volunteers you get in this year. Because of the amount of volunteers, we may move to neighboring communities oh, to do collections yes. there. Um, and hopefully next year we can expand a little bit more to other areas. Yeah. But um, people from other areas are always free to to, to come through to drop off their stuff. Yes. And youth from around Gauteng, we even have young people from Mpumalanga coming down all the way That's to so participate. Beautiful in this yes. so um, there's, you can call the, the following number it's okay. 084 493 6475 I'm just going to repeat that 084 493 6475 or you can follow us on Twitter and that's at Kathrada Found um, capital K and capital F or at AKF underscore YLP and that's our youth leadership program um, Twitter handle there and I think we basically, um, in the Lanesia area, it will, it will be a door-to-door collection. Yes. On the day, people can come through either to the foundation's offices or to Nirvana Secondary School, which is where the, the main sort of collection point will be. Um, and I'm sure you can just Google Nirvana Secondary School and get the details. You and you can, do, you can drop off your, your clothing or food items there. And um, once again, we urge people to just share it on social media, create awareness, follow us. And if you're interested in doing this in your community um, in in the next year or so, yeah. please get hold of us and you can start something up on your own as well. Lovely. That was Zakira Vadi from uh, the UpMed Katarada Foundation. You are the communications uh, manager and so great speaking to you. And I think it's such an amazing, amazing uh, initiative. I think... Everyone should get involved. It's how many hours have you? Is this one, two days? Maybe you can choose one day, depending on yeah. And with the amount of volunteers we're getting this year, we think that we're probably going to get done. Um, we're probably going to do the Lanesia area in about three to four hours. That's only. what I'm thinking so as well. So you're going to have so many it. more uh, communities that could benefit because you've got time. Yes, if you guys want a little bit more information, don't forget to go to www.social-tv.co.za. You can email me. You can go on to their uh, Twitter page. You can go on my Twitter page, Viewer for Real, and I will definitely give you more uh, information as well. Uh, please don't be afraid to to just... To take some hours out of your day. It's a Saturday. It's cold. Think of someone else. And uh, it might make your entire year. It might change your perspective. Uh, thank you for listening to The Social Show. I'll be back again. Same time, same place tomorrow with the very best of CSI.